Good morning, Morai Rabotai. We are continuing on Masechet Abu Dazarav, and Daf Hey Amud Aleph, 15 lines up, or 5 lines up from the wide lines. Today's Amud is being learned. Lishut Yosha ben Dina Diana, Yael bat Rivka, Menashe ben Asi. And today's Amud is also being learned. Leilu Nishmat Sipora bat Yitzchak. We are still in the middle of the Agadic parts we spoke about. What would have happened if Jews would not sin after Matan Torah? After they accepted the Torah already, what would have happened if they would keep it up and not do the Chet HaEgel? Would they still stay alive? Would they not stay alive? Rish Lakish said, initially we should thank our forefathers for doing the Chet HaEgel because otherwise we would not have been here. The Mara initially thought that that means they would not have Piriyav. Rivya, the Gemara, subsequently changed the understanding in Rish Lakish and said, no, not that they would not have children. They would have children, but they would not die. So we would be living right now with Moshe Rabbeinu, with Yeshua, with Aaron Kohen, And hence, we would not be really considered significant in uh, comparison with our forefathers. But then the Gemara said, wait a second, is it true that they would not have died if they didn't sin. And what I said, yes. And the whole thing was created in the beginning of the world, al Tenai, because if they would not accept the Torah, the whole world would go back to Tohu Vavohu. So you see, everything was mentioned al Tenai, and therefore the mitzvot of the Torah also was considered on condition when it says Yibum, when it talks about the parashav nachalot of inheritance, all of those parashiot would not be relevant if we didn't sin, because nobody would die. So you have no inheritance, you have no Yavam and Yavama, and hence people would not die. Now the Gemara is going to challenge that. Says the Gemara, me... When the Pasuk says, right immediately after Matan Torah, before they did Chet Egel, the Pasuk says, And at the end of the Pasuk says, In order that should be good for them, and for ch- the children, Le'olam. So the question is, how do you understand the man yitav lahem ve'livnehem Le'olam? What does it mean? That it should be good for them forever. So says the Brita, Le'batel mehem malach ha'mavet, Yifshar. Can't nullify the concept of death, says the, the Brita, Hashem says, because Shkvar Nikzara Gezara. Already there has been a decree on Adam Arishon that he's going to die, and that decree is going to carry through. Can't change that. So therefore, when it says, that should be good for them, and for the children, the acceptance of the Torah would be beneficial for them, that no umavelashon, no nation could be ruling over them, conquering them. They're going to be untouchable if they accept it. So therefore, if they would not have sinned by Cheta Egel, they would still die. People would still get old and would, get, mm-hmm. would, would die. But the benefit would be that we would be untouchable. Nobody could really affect the Jewish people in a negative way. You would be on top of the world. That would be the bracha, and that's what they lost when they did Ched HaEgel. Says the Gemara, Shenemar leman yitav lahem velivnehem ad olam. So the Gemara now answers, says no, Resh Lakish is saying like a different brighter. In other words, there is Machlok Tanaim over here. One brighter is what you said, that the brighter says, the, you know, that you can't nullify Malachamavet, that's one Brita. But there is an arguing Brita that says the Itake would not die if they didn't do Cheta Egel. Huda Markihai Tana, the Tanya, Rabbi Yossi Omer, 
Rabbi Yossi holds that they would not have died. Lo kiblu Yisrael et ha-Torah, era kedeh shelo yeh malach ha-mavet sholet vahen. They accepted the Torah, and that would affect them in a way that they would not die anymore. Malach ha-mavet would not be ruling over them. Shenemar, as the Pasuk says, first wide line now, Ani amarti Elohim atem, uvnei elyon kulechem. I said, Hashem, Hashem says, when you accepted the Torah, I said, ah, you became like Malachim. Now you, you're going to be immortals. But when you ruined your actions and you did the Egel, you're going to die like Adam Arishon. So the death came back to the world, even though that it was taken away. Now this is, of course, very interesting because Adam Arishon didn't have Zuhama. And therefore, he was not supposed to die. The way the Ramchal explains this in that Tegunot is that the world was a different world. The, the earth that Adam Anishun was taken from was a different earth. Shamayim was a different Shamayim. And therefore, they had no mixture of Ra until Etzada Tovara. Etzada Tovara made a mixture of Tovara in every element, every fiber of being of the world. So now, therefore, you can't really deal with this when people sinned, Adam Arishon and Chava sinned, it became, Ra became part and parcel of every fiber of being. How are you going to get rid of that when you're going to go back to, to goodness? It has to be that it has to be a new Shamaim and a new earth. So how can you do that? You have to decompose what has been and remake the creation. So hence the death and the decomposition of the body. And then there's going to be, after Elif Ashvi and so on, there's going to be a Shamaim HaChadashim, the Ha'aris HaChadasha. It's going to be a remaking of the creation that now it's going to be good. Right? Now the... Tremendous level that people by Har Sinai achieved was that now that they said Naseve Nishma, they nullified their goof by saying, I don't need to understand it. They completely attached themselves to the Dat of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and their Chazal say, Paska Zuhamatam. That Zuhama of the Nachash, of the outcome of Etzadat, ceased to exist. Now, they became completely good. So they went back to the level of Adam HaRishon before the Chet, and Adam HaRishon before the Chet was not supposed to die, because you don't have to decompose. And you're connected with your Neshama being the dominant part of the combination of Guf and Neshama. Neshama doesn't die. So just like Neshama doesn't die, the Guf who is Batel, that's nullified to the Neshama, also is not going to have death. It's going to be sustained eternally by its connection as a nullified part of the Neshama. And therefore they were not supposed to die, and hence the exactness of this Pasuk. Achen ke'adam temutun. said, when you said, Na'asev Nishma, I said, ah, you went back to the level of Adam and Hashem before the Chet, you became Elohim Adem. But then I said, Achen ka Adam tumutun. You did the same exact mistake that Adam Arishon did, and you're going to die like him. Indicating that they would not die beforehand. And that's the, the way the Gwara is understanding it now. Which is a very strong, a very strong mashma'ud. Right? What Rabbi Yossi is saying is very strong. He says, well, the Pasuk is indicating that they were not supposed to die before Chet HaEgel. They're not supposed to die. Now you have to understand how the first Brayta will deal with this Pasuk. Right? Which the Gemara is going to go through it. Was their free choice also as clear as Adam Because we know before that said, in a way, Adam's free choice were like angels. Like... It was very clear for him what was good, what was wrong. Um, obviously, he did the sin, but he had his own justification in doing so. Oh. Are people on that same level as far as free choice as well? or So again, the, the Bechira is a very complex unit, but at the same time, you have like 
like Rabbi Dasler explains, you have always nekudata bechira. It's some, it, it, it's an area that your challenge lies, and obviously, most definitely, both of them had amount of challenge that their decision made it that they, you know, why Alam Arishon was going down, by them was going up. And then, of course, by Cheta Egel, we already spoke about the fact that it was not necessarily supposed to happen. Akash wanted it to happen, and so on. So says the Gemara. Now the Gemara goes to, to cross-examine these two brightas to see w- what each one of them would do with the proof of the other one. So remember, the first brighta, the proof was from the Pasuk of Leman Itav Lachem Velivnechem Leolam Al Olam. It's going to be for, forever good for you, which seems to say um, the, the point that the first brighta wanted to, to draw out of it, says the Gemara now. The first wide line. The Rabbi Yossi Nami, Rabbi Yossi who says that there, was, there would be no death, Haketiv lemani tabla hem velivnehem ad olam, the Pasuk says, for, forever will be good for you. Which indicates there will be good, but still death will be there. It's not that would be no death. Lemani tabla hem. So says the Gemara, Tovahu de havia hamitaika. It indicates that there will be good for them, but there's still death around. The Mara says, no, that's not the case. Rabbi Yossi will tell you, You know what the greatest tova is? The greatest good is when there's no death in the world. Everything is good. That's the greatest good. So when he says, Forever there will be. What's the goodness that's Forever. Everlasting goodness is we don't have to die, right? You, you're going to be around forever. The Tarakama, now the other Braita, the Tarakama, Haketiv Achem Kadam Temutun. He also has to deal with the, the Pasuk that says, Amarti Elohim Atem, Uvner Yon Kulechem, Achem Kadam Temutun, which indicates that had they not done the Cheta Egel, they would have lived forever. How does Tarakama? Deal with that. Tarakama holds they would have died even despite the Cheta Egel. So, how does Tarakama deal with the Pasuk? Achen Kadam Temutun says the Mara, my mita aniut. When it says Achen Kadam Temutun, it doesn't mean that now that you sinned, you're gonna die. No, they, they, they were gonna die anyways. So, why is it Achen Kadam Temutun? Means that your life is going to be. A very low quality life. You're going to have difficulties in, in, in your life. Even the Ramban, in his Drasha and Rosh Hashanah, he writes when the Gemara says, in, in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, the Vizai, in the Gemara there says that the Shlosha Sfarim, there are three books open in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There are Sifrei Tzadikim, right? Sefer Chaim, Sifrei Metim, and their Benonim says the Ramban when it says if someone has more averot than schuyot, he right immediately is written to death. Says the Ramban doesn't mean that he's going to die, drop dead that year. It means he's going to have difficult life. He's going to get sick. He's going to have deficiencies of, of all, all sorts and so on and so forth. That also is considered mita. So in mita doesn't always mean necessarily. Um, in the language of Chazal, at least, it does not always mean actual death. It could mean um, difficulty. Now, in the biblical language, mita could mean four things. And the Mara is going to go through them. And one of them is aniut. One of them is being an ani. When a person is poor, ani, chashuv kamet. Ani is considered like dead. And therefore, when it says, achen kaadam temutun, that now you're going to die, it doesn't mean that beforehand they were not supposed to die actually. They were supposed to die. But they were supposed to have a quality life, riches and everything. And now that they did Heta Egel, the bracha was taken away from them. It says now a new is going to be coming to the world because you did the Heta Egel. So says the Gemara, My mita a 
the death over here is a reference to and you to being poor the Amar more Arba'a Hashubim Kametim. There are four categories of people who are considered like dead. What are they? Eluhen. Ani Suma Um Sora Um Lobanim. Ani a poor person. Suma a blind person. Rahman Litzlan Um Sora, someone that has Sarat. Um Lobanim, someone that is childless. Now the Wara goes through the proof for each one of them. Dikhtiv, by Ani, Kimetu Kola Nashim. The, the, the Torah says Moshe Rabbeinu was commanded to go back to Mitzrayim and in the initial meeting that Kishporko had with him he says go back to Eretz Mitzrayim because all the people who wanted you who wanted you dead they themselves died that's what the Pasuk says Vayomer Hashem and Moshe Midian. when he was in Midian Hashem appears to him he tells him Lech Shu Mitzrayim People wanted you to kill you, they're all dead. Now, who were these people who wanted to kill him? Tatan Vaviram. Right? They're the ones who say, Oh, you you you, you are you're gonna have a organia taumer. You want to kill us just, just like you killed the other Mitzri the other day, and then they went and they slandered him to Paro, and Paro sent after him to get him. So Tatan and Raviram are the people who want his life. Where are Tatan and Raviram? They died. They didn't die until some two years later in Parashat Korach they died. So what do you mean that they died? We know that Tatan and Raviram didn't die. So the Pasuk says what he means. It says, Umanin who Tatan and Raviram umi metu. Did they die? So they didn't die. But you know what happened? Maybe ever they were there, Elashayar do minichsehim. They were very influential people prior to this. They were people who were between the Jews and the palace. They were very influential because of their riches. I mean because of their influence. They were politically high up and they were very rich and they lost their status with the Malchut. They became like regular peddlers. And now Hashem says, Well, they're like dead. For all practical purposes, they're considered dead, even though that they were not physically dead. So you see that you could be alive and be called dead if you are an ani. So says the Gemara. That's one. Second is suma, a blind person. How do you know that suma is considered like dead? The Khtiv the pasuk says the machashaki moshivani kemete olam Hashem. You have. Kept me in dark like meteolam, like the dead people. So you see someone that's sitting in dark that cannot see. Like, well, some 90% of a person's information from their surrounding comes from their sight. If Rahman it's not a person doesn't have sight, you're missing almost all of your connection with the world around you. You don't see anything. And hence, it's considered like a person has, you know, their life is very insignificant in that way. Okay, they can't communicate with the life outside of themselves, and that keeps them completely secluded to themselves. It's like basically like dead. Says the Gemara. The third one is Mesora. Mesora has a tumah that has to go outside of Shalosh Machanot, and he has to cover his he- head, and he has to say, Tame, Tame, Yikra. He goes, Chutz Machane Moshavu. He goes and sits alone. A person that lives that type of life alone, in, you know, completely uh, separated from the, the world outside, he's also like dead, because he has, again, no interaction with anybody outside. He, he can't even go to the Machane. He has to be excommunicated Par excellence, not just outside of Machane Shechina, Machane Livia, but it has to be outside of all three Machanot, completely outside, secluded, and um, alone. Dichtiv, Anati, Kemerano, how do we know this considered like met? Because when Miriam and Aaron spoke negatively about Moshe, and Miriam was the one that initiated the talk, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu punished them, both Aaron and Miriam, Miriam was the one that got punished more severely and first, and she got tzarat. She got tzarat, and Aaron started p- 
pleading to Moshe on her behalf that Moshe Rabbeinu should dive into Hashem, and that ended with the tefillah, the famous tefillah, Moshe Rabbeinu, El Na Refana La, and then she had to stay outside of the Machane, as we mentioned, for seven days until she, she was healed, you know, and, and she was allowed to come back to the Machane. Al not take a when Aurora Cohen is pleading on her behalf to Moshe, says, Al not take a Should not be like, like a dead person, and therefore should be healed. You see, Masora is considered like that. Umisha lo banim tichtiv, and a person that is childless, a barren, because the pasuk says by uh, by Rachel Imenu, when Rachel and Leah were, were married to Yaakov, and Leah was having children, Rachel was not having children. At some point, Rachel tells Yaakov Avinu, says Havali banim veimayin meta anochi. Give me children, because if I don't have children, meta anochi, I'm like a dead person. So, Tal Rabbanan, says the Gemara, we learned, in mechukotai telechu, Hashem says, if you go to, you know, in, in my mitzvot, in my chukim, ve'ed mitzvotai tishmeru v'asitem otam, which is a very redundant pasuk, in mechukotai telechu, ve'ed mitzvotai tishmeru, you can't say um, that in mechukotai telechu means if you do my mitzvot, because it says afterwards, which again, this gives platform for a lot of drasha, shit, you are melim Torah, and so on. But here the Gemara has a very interesting point that's not known to most people. The Gemara says, im is lashon tachanunim. Hashem is begging them. It says, please, I plead with you. Do the mitzvot. Go to my to to in in my path and in my ways. It's not a condition that if you want to do it or if you don't want to do it, it's lashon tachanunim, and we have it elsewhere as well. Lu is the same thing. Lu is like I wish. It's like a language of pleading and asking with bakasha. Only if. My nation will listen to me, says Hashem. Begging them to listen. Kim'at oyve'em achniya. V'asareem ha'shiv yadi Hashem says, I will so quickly defeat all of their enemies and put all of their their difficulties completely end them. Ve'omer lu ikshavta le mitzvotai. If you only would listen to my mitzvot, v'ayik enahar shalomecha. And your Peace and, com- and and perfection would be like Nahar, like a you know raging river coming on upon you. All the brachot, the shalom, the completion, and the perfection would be pouring upon you. But you see, Darkesh Baruch has lashon tachanunim. Even when he is commanding the mitzvot, and he is in position to command, but he is um, asking for it in lashon tachanunim. It's a beautiful thing of seeing the humility of Hashem. The brachot that will come to you if you only will listen. Tan Rabbanan, two lines up. Now we have been speaking about this one pasuk a lot. That Hashem, right immediately after Matan Torah, Says to Moshe Rabbeinu, I wish, I wish that this heart of theirs that fears me should stay for them all of the days. In order it should be good for them forever. The Mara Darshins, that here Moshe Rabbeinu is telling the Jews, you are ingrates, the sons of ingrate. You do not have a sense of hakaratatov, of gratitude. Why? Because look at what the Pasuk is saying. Hashem is saying, look, look at the level of Yirat Shamayim that these people have. I wish they should keep this level of Yirat Shamayim. Le'olam, forever. I wish means, well, 
they're not necessarily going to. Me then, who's going to give that they should be like this always? And says, the Gemara, they should have said, Ten Ata, you should make it. You should make it that we should be able to fear you and to please you like we do right now. But in order to do that, you are acknowledging that whatever you have accomplished now by Matan Torah has been also from Hashem. And they didn't want to acknowledge that. They thought, ah, kochi ve'otsim yadi, in a spiritual way, right? I climbed up the mountain of Hashem, mi ha'ale be'ar Hashem, umi ha'kum bimkom kotsho, neki kapai mubar nevav, I have been neki kapai mubar nevav, I reached this level of Yirat Shemayim, they wanted to take credit for that. Because otherwise, they would say, Hashem, how do you think we got up here? You helped us. You had revelations of Har Sinai, you had tremendous Nisim of Yamsuf, amazing miracles of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. You picked us up. We're standing where we're standing because we owe it to you. So you're asking me then, who gives that we should keep this? You give! Please, make it that it should be going on, ongoing Yirat Shamayim. They would have actually merited that if they only acknowledged that where they stand is also from Hashem. So because they didn't want to admit that it was due to Hashem's chesed, they didn't say ten atah. And that is in, being ingrate. Because you think you accomplished what you accomplished, that's being a kfuyet tova. That's being an ingrate. And says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I was asking you, again, the, the Ravad, Ravad over here understands the Gemara, that when Hashem says, Mi Yiten, it's like when Hashem wanted to, to destroy the Jewish nation, and He says to Moshe, he says, Let me kill them! Right? And Chazal say, Moshe says, Oh, let me, that means you're asking me to plead on their behalf. Otherwise, you don't need my permission. So when you say, permit me to kill them, you're basically asking me to say, no, I don't want you to. And Rabbat understands the Gemara over here the same way. He says, when Hashem said, me, then who gives that they should stay like this? He was hinting to them, Davin, and want it, show me that you really want, and I will give it to you. He was opening a door for them to Davin. Now, by the way, the Gemara says, in many places, Masachet Brachot, we had it, the flower Gimel, the Hakol Bide Shamayim, Chutz, Mirat Shamayim. So here we're talking about Yirat Shamayim. It says, Miten, Vaya Levavam Ze, Leiraoti. Who gives that they should be Yere Shamayim? You know who gives? <laughs> Yourself. Hakol Bide Shamayim, Chutz, Mirat Shamayim. The only thing. That it's not in the in the hand of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is Yirat Shamayim, right? So the Maharsha explains over here that even listen to this, that even Yirat Shamayim, which is in our hand, you have to daven for because you need Siata Dishmaya even for that. Rabbi Israel Salanter used to have groups of people davening for Ruchniut, Tefillah. Leruchniu, they had chaburas of a tefillah leruchniu that they would gather together outside of the three tefillot that, that we daven. They would just gather together to daven for the ruchniu, because says Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, even the yirat shamayim which is in your hand, only one thing yirat shamayim is in your hand. But actually achieving it in itziat adishmaya, even in that, and you see that says the Marsha from our gemara, because otherwise, how in the world are you going to learn the gemara? Yirat Shabbat should be completely in our hand, and Hashem is saying, me, ten, and we were supposed to say, ten Adda, Hashem, you should give. Because it's at the end of the day, still you need Siyat Adishmaya for it. So says the Gemara, Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu is calling them, Kifuyet Tova, Ben Kifuyet Tova. Why? Because, Besha'ah, Sheamar Kadosh Baruch Hu last light. The Israel miten vayal levavam ze lahem. Who gives? A, you know, I wish, I wish that it should, it should have been like this. 
היה להם לומר, they should have answered Hashem, תן אתה, Hashem, please you, should provide that, that we should be ירא שמיים. כפויה טובה, now the Gemara says, how do you see that they were כפויה טובה? Because it says, by man, נפשנו קצה בלחם הקלוקל. First of all, why do you need two פסוקים? You just gave a פסוק, a why they're considered ingrate, because they didn't say tenata. They didn't say you should make it. So why do you need another pasuk of them being ingrate about the man that Hashem gave them? Because Moshe Rabbeinu was not going to call them kfiyetova with just one failure. One failure you could say, okay, it happened. But you already have two. That's worse. Now what was the issue with the man? They complained about man and they called it lechem akedokel. Midrash says... Lechem akelokel means they would eat it, and in their me'ayim it would become kal. It would become light, as if it didn't have density, and they would be fed and they would be full. But this way, Hakadosh Baruch Hu made it in order that they shouldn't need to go to bathroom a lot, and make it easy for them. You know, in the midbar you have to go out of the machane. The, the halacha would be you have to go out of the machane and you have to dig and you have to sit and you have to create a bathroom and cover it. It's a whole. A whole tararam. So Hashem made it that they didn't have to do that. Rashi says in Chumash that this was kelokel milashon kilkul. Right? People said, we're eating this, we're not going to bathroom. We've been eating it for seven days, for ten days, for fourteen years. It's going to explode sometime. It's going to, something is going to go wrong with this. This doesn't sound right. And they were, they, they were degrading this. Now, the truth is Ramban explains that all man was was encapsulated shefa of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, so it was not really a ma'achal gashmi. It was not physical. That's why they never needed. Um, they had no waste. They never, never needed to go to bathroom because it was nivra be'varim. It would be completely absorbed in their in their body because it was shefa. And says the Ramban, the reason that they were sustained by it is because they went through Ma'var Ayam, through the opening of the sea, and they became high level spiritually, like Malachim, they could be sustained and draw sustenance from something completely spiritual. Says the Ramban, if me and you would eat it, nothing would have happened to us. We would not be full, we would not be sustained, because this was not a physical food. It was just enough made physical to be able to be visible for people, but it was really Lechem Abirim Achalish Melech Shemalache Lechem Shemalache Asharet Nizonim Boy was a spiritual food, but Hashem gave them all of this to make them more spiritual and more susceptible to Torah and Kedusha, and all they said was, Lechem HaKelokel, this is a disgraceful food, this is a light food, this is a source of Kilkul, however you understand it, they degraded it. And the second one is, Bene Kifuyetovah, when he says, you're the sons of a Kifuyetovah, it means you're the sons of Adam Arishon, who also was a Kifuyetovah. What's the first problem that Adam Arishon had? He made a mistake, he ate from Etzadat, and he blamed Hashem for it, nonetheless. Instead of thanking Hashem for giving him a wife, the first time he got into a problem with the wife, he says, Ah, Haisha Shedatata Imadi, Hashem, the wife that you gave me, gave me the fruit to eat. So he's complaining already, Instead of being thankful, that's considered being an ingrate as well. And that's considered kifuyetova ben kifuyetova. Bezrat Hashem will continue this in the days to come.